y'all, it's Michelle from the Scattered Scrapper. Welcome to my channel. Today is day 10 of scrap wing It's Trick or Treat Tuesday. And today's technique that I'm going to be trying is a decoupage with napkins. And um, first time using matte gel. And then also going to have a stencil and some of my Vicky Booten um, crayons here. The pictures that I'm going to be scrapbooking today are these pictures of my younger daughter in her costume last year. Oh, isn't she so cute? I just love it. Okay, I've got all my stuff, so let's get started. For today's technique, I'm following along with Vicki Booten and a video she has on her YouTube channel called Mixed Media in Minutes Tissue Decoupage. So I have a piece of her foundations paper and I am just covering it with the matte gel medium. And I really wish I had a bigger paintbrush because it kind of took forever for me to put this all over the page and it kind of started to dry out because I have a real thin layer. And if I had a much bigger brush it wouldn't have taken quite so long and that does come into play here in a minute when I get my um, tissue paper or uh, this is actually a napkin so here I am just kind of crinkling it up because I'm wanting it well first of all in her video she's crinkling the tissue paper for texture and here you could see how I've torn the napkin and um, and it didn't want to move because it had already started to dry. So note to self, get a bigger paintbrush <laughs> if I do this again. And I have to say, um, I'm not a he I'm not I'm not a huge fan of this technique. So I I wouldn't call this one a trick, but I I need a bigger brush. And I think I need actual tissue paper that's kind of made for this sort of thing. I know Tim Holtz has tissue paper that's made for mixed media. Um, using a napkin is fine. I think it would just do better in a smaller format. So bigger brush, maybe smaller format. So I have set this aside and let it dry. And now I am breaking out the um what is it called modeling paste i am embarrassed to say that i have had this modeling paste for probably th three or four years and i've never used it <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited to be getting it out and using it that's one of the things that i really like about this trigger treat tuesday is i'm trying Things that I've been wanting to try for a long time and I just don't make time to do it. But this series helps me to do that. And I find techniques that I just really have fun with and I want to do them more. And this is one of them. I love the modeling paste and putting it through stencils. Um, I did consider using my glow-in-the-dark uh, modeling paste or... No, oh, what is... What is it called? It's called Grit Paste. The Glow. Um, I, I considered it, but I was like, eh, if I do that, then I can't do the rest of this technique. Which I definitely wanted to do. So I went ahead and just used this white modeling paste. And um, I did have a little bit kind of ooze underneath. But I think it's because I don't have a, a good technique yet because I don't do it very often. So I think I, I kind of kept going over and over it a bit too much. So if I can get it to where I only have to go over the stencil maybe two, two times, two or three times, instead of over and over again, then it, it might turn out a little better. I mean, it looks fine. You can't really tell. Even I'm looking at the layout in front of me now. And it, it still looks good. 
So this next part of the technique is um, I let the modeling paste dry. Well, for the most part, it, <laughs> it wasn't rock hard, but I had let it dry. And now I'm just um, scribbling out a whole bunch of these Vicki Booten crayons and using a stencil brush. And I'm going through and um, putting color down on top of the modeling paste. Um, here again is a part of the technique that I'm, I really either need to practice with or do it in a different way or maybe do it more exactly how she was doing it in her video. And, and I'll link the video down below so you can go over there and take a look because she's a wonderful teacher and um, I just, I love all of her techniques. So I'm just building color and I think if I, I think if I'd let it dry a little bit more like overnight and wait for it to be really, really good and dry, then it would have taken the color a little better I'm not sure, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, when I very first did it, I was like, this isn't turning out like I thought it would. <laughs> and I think what I really needed to do was, was build the color up a little more. But now that I have lived with it for a few days and I look back on, on my layout, um, I don't hate it. I do, I do like the technique, but like I say, I think I just want to try it on a smaller layout or, um, and, and with tissue paper that's actually made for mixed media instead of the, the napkin. And I did peel the napkin apart. So this is just the top layer of a two layer napkin. And, um, I had... I think I got these napkins, I don't know, I don't remember what year I got these napkins for Halloween, but I think they're really cool. I like the jack-o'-lanterns. If you don't know yet, I really love the jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> so here I'm just trimming off basically a quarter of an inch all the way around, and I'm going to mat my paper here and just using a black I thought about white but then I was like no we want this to be kind of spooky so I'm matting it on the black and let's see I do use a little bit more ATG tape than normal because it is kind of stiff since it's um, covered in that matte gel medium and when that dried it it was pretty stiff and then having the uh, modeling paste on it as well and since it is a mixed media background I am using wet glue in addition to the tape and I really I'm just using the tape to kind of keep my keep my photos still to allow the glue time to dry. And I'm going to go ahead and glue and tape all the rest of these pictures. And I have them, I don't think these pictures are in chronological order, but I just put them in order that looked cute to me. So I've just got her standing there and then she's got this silly little pose where she's got her, her hands up like she's going it or something I don't know and then she's laughing about it these may have been in chronological order I'm not really sure but um and then the one on the far end there that I'm putting down is her doing a pretty a little pretty pose so I've got those down and now I'm going to be well here in just a second I'm going to be putting down my title and the title that I picked out 
or that I came up with for this layout is all dressed up and no crows to scare. <laughs> I thought that was kind of clever. Maybe not. I thought it was cute. But I put all of these down and I will go back and glue them all down with my wet glue. But I'm not going to make you watch that. So that is it. I'm not going to put anything else on it because I think that the border um, with the jack-o'-lanterns and the faces in the background are plenty enough. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.